Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I look absolutely terrible, I know. And that's kind of part of the reason why I'm here. It's time guys, like it's just time. Today is February 6th and Marley passed on January 10th. So we're coming up on the one month mark. It's been just over three weeks at this point. Um, it's been a lot harder than I actually anticipated it being. You know, I just can't believe what a huge loss this little 14 pound ball of fur has, you know, has caused. I've been crying every single day for the last three weeks. So my bags, y'all, <laughs> my bags have definitely upgraded from department store to designer. Like they, they got to upgrade. I haven't been doing skincare. I haven't been doing hair care. I've just been just grieving and bed rotting. So I'm pulling myself out of it today because I feel like I'm at the point where if I let it go any longer, I could get past the point of no return. You know what I mean? If you guys remember, Hair by Half did my hair December 15th. She did crochet faux locks. I have a video on the install process if you guys are interested. I love them. So while I did take the crochet faux locks out, these are still the braids that um, they were attached to. And it's been, like I said, since December 15th. So it's been two months. And honestly, guys, some of them are starting to bud. Especially in the crown area where my hair is a little bit more coarse, like this guy. Starting to bud like, it's crazy. I'm not gonna lie. I thought about it for a second. I thought about just leaving them and letting it lock up from here because I don't want to do my hair. Like, I don't want to do anything. But I decided against it. I have 50 of these in my hair, 50 braids, 50 locks, whatever you want to call it. Um, but I know that if I did lock my hair, I would want closer to 100. That's number one. I'm just putting some deep conditioner in it. But also, you know, when I think about my natural hair journey, um, my natural hair journey started because of my deep love for natural, kinky, afro-textured hair. Like I truly, truly fell in love with natural hair. And that's what prompted me to, you know, do this whole journey, especially sharing it online on YouTube, was sharing the love that I have for this texture of hair. And that in turn spawned my love for this community and my love for content creation. So because my natural hair journey really does revolve around love, I just felt like it wasn't a good idea to let these lock up because this would be coming from a place of grief, not of love. So yeah, all that to say, although I really did contemplate just let, leaving them be and letting it lock up, I've decided against it. So I figured I might as well just come on here and chat with you guys while I detangle. So this will probably be kind of like my pet grief diaries part two, as well as a talk and twist. I hope you guys are all doing well though. Um, I do really appreciate you all being here for me, but of course I always wish the best for you as well. For me, I'm okay. Like, you know, I'm fine physically and everything. I've just been really depressed to be honest. Not to co-op that term because I haven't been diagnosed with it or anything, but it's just how I've been feeling, you know? I don't even know if depressed is the right word, to be honest. Um, it feels like, okay, <laughs> y'all know I'm the queen of analogies and I'm sure you guys are sick of my analogies by now, but this is just how I express myself. I feel like I probably should have been a writer. Actually, when I was a kid, that was my... You know when you ask a kid what they want to be when they grow up? That was my answer all the time. Like whenever somebody asked me, Tony, what do you want to be when you grow up? I would always say, I want to be a children's book author and illustrator. Never happened. Uh, I guess there's still time, but I mean, do parents want to buy books from child-free people? I don't know. Doubt it. I guess I could always write under a pen name. Anyways, all that to say, I really like to express myself in analogies. So... Here's my analogy of how I've been feeling 
since Marley's left. Picture your favorite year, like your favorite age that you were, right? For me, I think my favorite age was 40, so I'm just gonna use 40. Picture it's your 40th birthday or favorite age birthday and your best friend bakes you your dream birthday cake, okay? It is gorgeous. Close your eyes and picture it. Perfectly iced, perfectly frosted with the most delicious buttercream. It's got all these vintage swirls and like intricate designs. It's a double layer. It's your favorite flavor. It just looks so delectable. You can't wait to dig in. And like I said, it's your favorite age, right? So she puts the exact number of candles on the cake for you. For me, 40. So she brings over this beautiful cake, 40 candles glowing and casting this beautiful light all around the room. And she goes to set it down in front of you and the wind shifts and blows one candle out. It's still a beautiful, beautiful cake. It's just not as bright anymore. And in this analogy, the cake is my life. Great cake, beautiful cake. Couldn't ask for a better cake. Super blessed to have this cake. It's just not as bright anymore. I still have 39 candles left. I still get to share this beautiful cake, taste this amazing flavor. While I still love and appreciate the cake, there's no denying that one candle is still missing, you know? Maybe I should start blogging again. I guess technically that is like a form of writing. I don't even know if my blog is still active, guys. I haven't blogged in, I don't even know. I was never really a blogger, I don't think. I just had it. It was a blog spot. It was like tonydaily.blogspot.com. I don't even know if it's still active, y'all. I don't even know if that website's still around. Like, that's how long it's been since I blogged. <laughs> I think when I started my YouTube channel, like a blog sort of went hand in hand with it. So that's when I started it. But I never really poured into it the way I poured into my YouTube channel because I was just really obsessed with video content creation and still am. But now that I think about it, maybe bringing back a blog might be um, a nice creative outlet, like a different form of creativity since I've kind of become accustomed to video content creation. Plus, it'll give me a place to like house everything, you know, house my videos and anything that would do better in written form, like recipes. Like when I cook, you guys always ask me for recipes. It might be better form. It might be better formatted for a blog post. I've been getting a lot of support and I just wanna, again, thank you guys. I know I've thanked you guys a million times, but I just can't help it. I appreciate you guys so much. Like I've gotten so many messages, emails, DMs, haven't responded to any mess any comments yet, um, if I'm being honest. Still haven't been able to bring myself to do that. But I even received like some cards, I received flowers, I received, um, gifts like baskets um all kinds of gifts like really thoughtful gifts from you guys so i just want to say thank you so much like i really really appreciate it the support the support has been really really overwhelming like i just i just appreciate you guys so much i say it all the time but whenever something happens in my life which is either sad or good which is either good or bad like a sad moment or a happy moment you guys just really show out for me and i i just can't believe that i'm so lucky to have built such a a genuine um a genuine community you know because i feel like a lot of influencers maybe don't have that especially modern day influencers it seems like it could be more surface level like you know just a lot more about consumerism and nothing deeper than hauls and stuff like that so i'm just really grateful for my community video i think i mentioned this in my first video but yeah like i don't really have a routine without marley like marley was my reason to get up in the morning like she's the reason i left the house <laughs> you know what i mean and now my calendar is empty no more vet appointments no more grooming appointments no more going to pet smart like it's just you know it just feels a little empty. 
So I figured I would throw myself back into routine in some way. Starting with vlogging because it's something that I love and something that obviously I can easily do. So that's what we're doing. The house is definitely not the same without her. I think the worst times are when I actually forget that she's gone. Like sometimes, like I came home the other day and instinctively said, Marley, obviously forgetting, you know what I mean? Or at night, um, like I would always get up and check on her at night whenever I heard a noise. And now I'll get up and be like, oh yeah, She's not here and then i just realized that the noise is like one of the girls or something in the kitchen so yeah those are the toughest times i definitely do also have some guilt which i know that i shouldn't like i know that like i'm so grateful for the years that we had together 16 long years and i know i took good care of her i know i was the only constant in her life never abandoned her um and I just loved her to bits, but I guess it just, I don't know. I think with death, you just always feel a little bit of guilt. Like I just could have maybe done more for her to save her, you know? But yeah, other than that, all I can do is just hold on to the good memories and try to move on. I definitely miss her. The house is definitely not the same. She was literally like my only constant in life for the last 16 years literally like she's the only one that was there the entire 16 years and i'm the only one that was in her life for the entire 16 years and just in case y'all have seen anybody else say it, otherwise marley was my dog always was always is always will be my dog solely my dog like i got marley when i still lived at home with my mom you know what i mean so before it was me and anybody else it was me and marley like i viewed her as more than a dog i truly believe that that dog was my soulmate i've talked about this to you guys before the fact that i truly believe that hollywood has sold us an idea of what soulmates are and i've never been of the school of thought that a soulmate has to be romantic like i've always thought that a soulmate could be anybody in your life so i'll give you an example um you guys know Keisha, my housemate, and her sister, Sharice, right? I have always been convinced that those two are soulmates. Like, they have traveled this life before. Like, their souls have always been connected. And keep in mind, these are two grown women uh, with, with children and with life partners, you know, that they plan on spending the rest of their lives and building a family with. But I still think that they are each other's soulmates, regardless of how much love they have um, from other sources in their life. I've never seen a connection with anybody else the way I've seen with those two. So yeah, I've always just been of that school of thought that your soulmate could be anybody um, in your life. It never dawned on me though that it could be an animal. It might sound crazy to some of you, but I guess it just depends on your school of thought most religions that i'm aware of do believe that one god created all life forms so if you think god created us and animals then you would also think that animals have souls right because one god all creatures i guess that's why some religions follow a plant-based diet i guess that's where the moral dilemma of veganism comes in or vegetarianism. I don't know if I believe all animals have souls. Like jellyfish, for example. Like jellyfish barely have minds, you know? But cows? Cows really get me. Like cows are like giant puppies. They're so playful and so sweet and they have best friends. And sometimes I feel so bad. I'm like, cows would be the reason that I go vegetarian. It wouldn't be chickens. It could never be chickens. Like chickens, chickens do not pull up my heartstrings at all. They literally just seem mindless as well. But cows, cows are giant field puppies. The fact that they have best friends, ugh, my heart. Why do they have to be so delicious? I could probably do without the whole cow if you just give me the tail. I could definitely quit beef, but I'm not quitting oxtail, so 
if we could find a way to to farm just the tails we could be on to something my algorithm is a lot of animals okay a lot of pets pet talk dog talk like the algorithm knows me so i have a lot of videos like that on my on my timeline and um there was a trend that was going around on the holidays which was um this is your sign to take your dog to see christmas lights and i was obsessed i watched so many of those videos and i was like i'm going to do that and i even said to half half i'm going to bring marley to go see christmas lights um can you come with me so you can like film and we can get some footage and she was like yeah no problem just let me know when and then remember i wasn't in the christmas spirit and i was just like ah oh, forget it and now i can't do it and now marley will never see christmas lights and i feel so bad about that and whenever i drive by a house that still has christmas lights up i'm just like why did why didn't i just do what i said i was gonna do you know i feel like that would have been such a cute moment too because you know her eyesight was going so she couldn't really see much but the lights she could definitely see i didn't make new year's resolutions but because of that i feel like that's one of the things i want to try to stop doing is saying stuff i don't really mean or like waiting until i actually I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, not that I didn't mean it, but just not speaking in vain. Like, just, oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I want to do this. I want to do that and never do it, you know? So I feel bad about that. There was another trend going around, though. It was showing my dog parts of the house that they've never seen. And I did actually do that trend with Marley. So I'm glad about that. And the funny thing is I actually did that trend with her like a week before she passed. Like I picked her up and I showed her the top of the fridge. <laughs> um, I showed her the top of the plant shelf. I showed her um, behind the TV. I showed her like just areas of the house that she would never be able to see from her, you know, 12 inch vantage point. So. <laughs> She looked at me like that was crazy when we were done, but I think she enjoyed it. Crying really does a number on your actual physical looks. So I really feel like I need to treat myself. Maybe I can manifest a spa sponsorship or like a, you know, facial sponsorship or I don't know, some sort of sponsorship. I could definitely use a tan. I have seen some black girl spray tan, but I need to think big. I, I need to manifest a vacation sponsorship. That'd be even better than a spray tan sponsorship, but we'll see what this year has to offer. I am excited about the year. Once I finish detangling, I'm just gonna let this deep conditioner sit in my hair for like a good, I feel like a good hour. It's a protein deep conditioner. It's the hair mayonnaise, which is an oldie but goodie. I've always loved this hair product. So I decided to pull it out of my roster. I'm gonna let it sit on my hair for like a good hour. Cause like I said, my hair has been neglected for the last two months. The only thing I've been doing to it, to be honest, is just putting my growth oil on. Like once a week, probably. I've been making my own growth oil, guys. I forgot to tell you. Well, I didn't forget, it's just, haven't been you know haven't been up to vlogging so haven't made a video on it but yeah i've been making my own growth oil lately that's pretty much the only thing that i've been doing to my hair is just putting growth oil on once a week and that's it if it got damp in the shower it got damp in the shower but honestly other than that i've been super super neglecting it so we'll see how it looks after i finish this deep condition hopefully it hasn't suffered too much but if it has, that's okay too. I'm just being gentle with myself right now. So yeah, I just plan on dousing it with this deep conditioner and then leaving it on for an hour. I'll probably just catch up on some YouTube videos while I let it penetrate. Speaking of YouTube, um, I was chatting with one of my friends the other day. She um, messaged me just to check in and we just got to chatting. And we were just reminiscing about, you know, the old the old YouTube, the old natural hair community, which we miss. We love the new YouTube. We love the opportunities. We love the growth, but we miss our community because that's where it all started, right? We were just so excited about natural hair and it just 
brought us all together, like black women from around the world in droves from different walks of life. And it was just so beautiful. And natural hair events, natural hair shows were a huge thing that I loved going to and loved meeting you guys and obviously supporting the local businesses, black owned businesses and stuff like that. And I wouldn't, I don't really go to them anymore. I don't even know if they're still around or running. And I was thinking what I would go to though is an old school natural hair event. And I'm not an event planner, but I just feel like if somebody planned it, it would do well. I just feel like it would be really nostalgic. And I think it would also be nice to give the OGs their flowers. I love the new girls, don't get me wrong, but like we started this ish, you know, like how awesome would it be? Imagine a natural hair show with like all of our favorite vendors, old school products and and old school YouTubers, you know, like a meetup with Rustic Beauty and Terra 916, a live twist out tutorial with African Export, <laughs> chat with Curly Chronicles and Mahogany Knots product recommendations by Shari J, a head wrap tutorial with my girl Ashik 1118 because we already done know, maybe a little makeup tutorial by Bargain Princess, and of course the outfit of the day with, ooh, look at my shoes, who is sugar. Like, I would attend that, you guys. Like, no? And you know, all of us OGs were around before the sponsorships and before the brand deals and before the monetization, so I just think it would be really cool way to give back monetarily as well because a lot of them left before they were able to take advantage of any of this right to give back monetarily to the ogs you know what i mean the ones who, who pioneered this whole craft and to the ones who you know are the reason that we're here many of us are here so yeah it was just nice to reminisce talk about all the ogs and I just got to thinking about how nice it would be to see some of them again, you know, and see how they're doing and see how big the babies are now. <laughs> because like we grew up, like we watched their kids grow up, some of them, you know, it's kind of like seeing Blue, like see Blue at the Grammys, y'all. It's kind of like seeing her and being like, what? Oh my goodness, niece, like where did the time go? You're so big now. You know, it's like I remember a lot of their kids and now their kids are probably in college. I'm halfway done and I'm sure that I've rambled your ear off quite enough. So I'll probably just do the rest off camera. I just really want to come in and, you know, let you guys know that I'm back. I'm ready to, you know, be able to come on here and remember Marley with you guys and and be OK. And um, yeah. And, I can't say thank you enough to you guys. Like, thanks so much again. She was just everything to me. She was more than a dog to me. We had an incredible ride, you know. She was there with me when I worked in corporate. She would come into my office and keep me company and sometimes get me in trouble when she barked while I was on meetings. <laughs> she was there when I bought my first home, which was a condo, and she loved it. She was a balcony dog and she loved being a balcony dog. And she was so cute. And she was there when I bought my first single family home. I got her first yard. She was there when I quit my job. She was there when I started my business. She was there when I got married. She was there when I celebrated getting divorced. Um, she was there for everything, um, highs and lows. And um, I'm so grateful for her. You know, I, I can't wait to see her again um, in another life form. So, yeah, thank you guys for loving her with me and for remembering her with me. The Bible says there's a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. So I plan on doing all of those things. I plan on experiencing all the emotions that, you know, God has allowed me to be able to experience. I'm not a sociopath or a psychopath, so I have a full gamut of emotions. And I'm going to experience them all, including grieving. And I'm just grateful that I have the good memories and that I have you guys to, to share them with. So, yeah, I'm going to get off camera and finish this off. Thank you so much for keeping me company. 
And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.